Welcome to What's to Eat. I'm your host, Linda Lonigan, Senior Clinical Nutritionist. I'm here to show you the very best that your community has to offer in healthy, fresh and delicious, and wonderful treats. Today I'm joined for a phenomenal restaurant, amazing place, and I'd like to introduce you to proprietor and co-owner Stephanie Small and Chef Joe Romano. Hi, Linda. Welcome. Hi. So, uh, Stephanie, please tell me how, how this came about. Well, if I had to be perfectly honest with you, it came about out of an idea, truly. Um, my co, my partner, actually, Brian Moss, and I are partners in a wine shop in Somers. And through the process of getting to know the community and spending time in Somers, which was a new, new place for me, mm -hmm. uh, we kind of stumbled upon the fact that there was a lack of cuisine, diverse cuisine in the area. And we decided to just take a leap of faith and take the space that was vacant next door to our wine shop and create a restaurant. That's uh, amazing. And what's very interesting that I noticed when you were able to share your wonderful food with me was that the creativity and the imagination involved in your dishes. It uh, Each and every dish has a tremendous amount put into it in terms of the ingredients coming together in this perfect blend. Uh, an orchestration of flavors. It's, it's terrific. I think one of the things Brian and I were very committed to and then when we found and met Joe and brought him on board was to create a menu that was extremely creative but also very non-intimidating. So all of the dishes, even though we put our own spin and Joe puts his own spin on things, are really things that as you read through are familiar with a twist. Mm -hmm. And also jam-packed with great quality ingredients um, and nutritional value as well. Right. And we all know some nutrition value about wine, particularly uh, yes. red. So what are some great things about... Well, we always say that they... So, so the myth out there is that there are 10 health benefits of wine, and I'm not going to bore you with all exactly 10 of them. But I think uh, some of the driving points are that wine in moderation uh -huh. um, is a health benefit. And a five-ounce pour of wine... Uh, one glass a day for women, two glasses a day for men, really do uh, look to uh, boost your immune system. Mm -hmm. It helps cognitive ability. It's been said that it increases bone density. Um, can stave off things like type 2 diabetes, mm -hmm. the antioxidants that right. fight against free radicals for cancer prevention. Got it. All seems a little extreme, I know, but nice to know that you can enjoy a passion of wine and pair it with some foods and also be able to reap some health benefits as well. Definitely. Absolutely. And red wine has Reverstal, which is known in terms of helping with age as far as heart disease and just some preventative of atherosclerosis and may help in terms of uh, in moderation. Say antioxidants like say. and anti-aging. There's no woman out there who's not going to want to enjoy a glass of red wine. Yeah, no, definitely. And Chef Joe Romano, you come from a tremendous amount of experience. Can you share where it began? Uh, it began at Osir del Circo, uh, the Maccioni's sister restaurant to the Cirque. Mm. I came right out of school, you know, ready to go and worked on a saute station and, um, you know, cut my teeth there. And it was a great experience. Uh, from there, I moved on to Union Square Cafe. Uh, that is a Danny Meyer-owned restaurant. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Learned a lot there. I actually grew there because mm -hmm. um, you, you change from cook to manager, and that's where I did it there. Sure. And I took a lot sure. in there. You did? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I came like up from the ranks, and you know, it, it was a wonderful experience and one that I will treasure to this day. That's wonderful. That's terrific. And do you have a favorite type of cooking in uh, general? Uh, there's. Or food? I, I really I can't pinpoint. It's like asking which one's my favorite kid. <laughs> I can't answer that question. Um, I do like to make pasta. I'm passionate right. about that. Right. Um, but I like to uh, dab into anything, whether it be French, Italian, Indian, Spanish, or Asian cuisine. You're uh, versatile. Uh, I like to, yeah. you know, challenge myself. Wonderful. That's a great way of putting it. It really is. What about at um, wine? Do you have a favorite dish you like to make? Um, I have a favorite. There, <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of dishes that I do enjoy. I, I do, and it's not the healthiest, but I do enjoy the pork roll that we have on there. Oh, um, okay. It's one of my favorite things because it's not only is it delicious, it's therapeutic to make. Sure. Uh, the flatbreads, making dough, it's therapeutic to make. Really? So, yeah, there's a lot of uh, passion and, and, you know, you, you feel with it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? When you're cooking, sure. you feel with it. That's an interesting take on it. 
I haven't heard of that. That's that's very because I always felt that uh, cooking and the idea of putting things together in a perfect blend, the synchronicity of flavors mm -hmm. for that delectable, perfect bite mm -hmm. is such an art. Yeah. And such a, a gift to be able to do so with such passion. And you certainly do that uh, at Unwind. Okay. So you have some wonderful things to, to share with us uh, today. So Absolutely. what is first? Uh, we're going to be uh, preparing the tiny, tiny tuna taka. Mm -hmm. And um, I have the plate set out, but I'm going to go ahead and finish this up. Mm -hmm. The uh, taco is being held down by an avocado mousse. The avocado okay. mousse has avocados in it. Right. Uh, it also has lime juice, lime zest. Also has some oil, right, and um, some um, salt and pepper to, to help season it. Mm -hmm. And what I noticed when I taste the tuna taco, that in itself it had that perfect blend, that it was that perfect bite, and mm -hmm. it was so nutrient dense in the avocado, which is wonderful monounsaturated fatty acids, yeah, and uh, and also the um, the tuna. Yes. Which, again, is great omegas and, and wonderful, uh, good fats, healthy fats. Go ahead. So the uh, um, avocado I'm putting on, um, I'm just going to quenelle it real quick. And that's basically when you're taking uh, the spoonful and you're putting it right in the center. And I'm going to do this two more times so that we do have avocado. Is that what quenelle means? I learned it, something Quenelle today. is basically um, like a semen side or a football-shaped item. You do it with... Um, Smooth items like whipped cream, ice cream even. I learned um, something. <laughs> That's interesting. I learn something every day as well. When yeah, I absolutely. If, if you're not learning, you're not doing something. You got it. As Socrates says, unexamined life is life not worth learning. So the tuna is marinated or dressed, if you will, uh -huh. in a soy sauce and um, rice wine vinegar. Mm -hmm. Also has in there, it has some um, scallions, mm -hmm. some garlic, yeah. and some ginger. Okay, all and right. we're just going to plate this. And garlic is wonderful. It's microbial, um, antimicrobial and antifungal, as well as enhancing immune system. And got those monounsaturates in there, as well as uh, ginger, which is great for the stomach. And digestion really can help. And the taco itself is made from... It is a... Um... Basically, it's an egg roll skin okay. that we cut ourselves and then we uh, deep fry. Uh huh. So those who come in and visit us Excuse who me. may have some type of dietary restrictions or sure. gluten sensitivities right. or just choose by choice to be gluten free, right. uh, we've been known to do uh, tiny tuna tacos sans the taco. Wonderful. So yes, you Love have to the hear that. beauty of the avocado. That's great. Mousse and then the as we like to call it sushi grade tuna. It's that yellowfin tuna. That we use at the restaurant. So it's wild. Yes, it's wild. Which is which is uh, great as well. But knowing that in terms of gluten free, you you have such a, a wonderful ambience and environment to know that you offer so many dishes that can be modified for dietary restrictions or gluten sensitivities. Uh, that it's just just as delicious without the shell. One hundred percent. And I think in this day and age with with people being so in, touch, in tune with their own bodies yeah. and aware of dietary needs, right. it's really important for us as we're out there as a part of the community to right. be able to respond and, and react appropriately for whomever it is that comes and chooses to dine with us. And you, and you certainly do. You absolutely do. Wonderful blend of great flavors, great textures, and uh, very nutrient-dense and one lovely delectable bite. So decorative. So the next dish I know that uh, Chef Joe is going to prepare is our uh, truffle chickpeas. Mm, of course, my favorite. <laughs> that we knew. Yes, yes. I have to confess they're probably my favorite too. Yes. They are it because um, uh, the chickpeas itself um, have a lot of fiber. Actually, it can have as much as 12 to 15 grams of fiber per serving. And the truffle oil is a great source of great fats. Um, and also, you, uh, sh uh, Chef Joe Romano had shared with me that if there was a problem with dietary restriction, that it could be baked as opposed to yes. your flour that you use. And you use rice, rice flour. flour. Mm -hmm. uh, we do that for obviously dietary uh, reasons. Yes. Um, plus, when we do deep fry this, the rice flour right. adds, adds such a great crispness to it. Yeah. Um, when it that. does come out of the fryer, we do um, then season with salt and pepper. Right. And then we... Uh, 
hit it with some black truffle oil. Right. Which I'm going to do right now for you. Adore and Linda, you oil. were telling me, and I know you just mentioned it a right. couple of moments ago, right. all of these incredible health benefits of truffle oil, which Very I was completely so. unaware of. Very much so. Just and makes you, it even more appealing. And when you have things like truffle oil and you have uh, fresh fish, um, wild, and you have incredible ingredients working together, you're as at, less apt to eat more. But you're eating in moderation and you're eating quality, such as a dish like this. I'm just going to finish it off with the cheese. And what kind of cheese? Pecorino Romano. I love cheese. And of course, for those who don't want the dairy in their lives, we just omit the cheese for them. Absolutely. <laughs> it, it happens. It, we get asked that often. You have to save me some. Without a shot without it. <laughs> You'll have to come in and ask Yes. <laughs> I know. Um, but again, something that's uh, really nutrient-dense and wonderful and a perfect blend of, of great ingredients. Mm -hmm. So the next dish we're going to prepare for you is our um, roasted beet and peach salad. Mm -hmm. So this is something that has been with us since the day we opened the restaurant. We're about to celebrate our one-year anniversary. Ah, can't even imagine it's been a year wow, that we've been really offering nutrient-rich food to this right. community. And this beet salad, which you will speak to, mm -hmm. and I know it's one of your favorites to talk about sure. from the nutritional um, yes. components of it. Yes. Uh, we switched to peaches uh -huh. uh, as a seasonal reason. We right. um, have previously done it with um, watermelon when, watermelon we, first when we first started. Watermelon, right. Yeah, and, and uh, uh, we went to apples and pears. And okay. then, uh, you know, we were trying to keep things seasonality. Sure. Um, it's just better for uh, the guests that come in. Of course. That we're not serving anything. It looks so pretty. <laughs> it is, very much so. Can yes. I just uh, yeah, show absolutely. that? Yeah, so you have a lovely blend of arugula, which is wonderful for uh, fiber, high in manganese. You've got peaches that are vitamin C, and a wonderful uh, blend of texture and flavor and uh, aroma, and just uh, so nutrient dense, powered with wonderful vitamins and minerals, and so delicious. The vinaigrette I'm going to add to this will be blood orange vinaigrette. So uh -huh. it's blood orange juice, okay. red wine vinegar, okay. extra virgin olive oil, salt, and pepper. Uh huh. Okay. As Joe is tossing this, I'm just going to interject a few sure. things. In terms of how we choose to create within our environment, um, right. we make everything in-house. Okay. So every vinaigrette, every sauce, uh, right down to the remoulade sauces that we use if we're making mayonnaise, Joe makes everything from scratch in-house. So we don't bring anything in That's that has odd ingredients really or good. artificial anything. It's it's literally all made in-house. And that, that's something we're very committed to. Yeah. Committed to the freshest ingredients, the best quality ingredients that we can get. Um, and obviously, you know, as we keep going back and forth, you know, not every single thing on our menu is going to be completely nutritious. Um, right. You know, <laughs> right. you don't gotta go to cook with butter, just... <laughs> gotta cook with salt. <laughs> yes. um, but balance and moderation balance and moderation. Key. And when you have something this delicious in terms of calorically, you have such a benefit of such wonderful flavor and color that calorically you might want to eat less but be so satiated right. and full with such a wonderful food. I'm going to finish it flowers. with uh, pistachios. Some pistachios that have been mm. toasted and crushed. Just going to lightly sprinkle Love this on top. pistachios. And some crumbled goat cheese as well. Goat cheese. Well, I think I have a new favorite. You're absolutely right, Stephanie, because I'm a, I'm a big cheese fan. That's the thing that I have to have balance and moderation, um, as well as pistachios are great vitamin C, um, vitamin C, B6, and potassium, which people aren't aware, and great uh, healthy fats. And just for garnish, we're going to go around with some balsamic reduction. Balsamic reduction is made with balsamic vinegar, uh, shallots, garlic, herbs, and as you can see, the consistency, the viscosity is so tight. So it comes out basically like a syrup. Wow. Wow. Oh, that is so beautiful. It really is. And so delicious. And I could easily recommend this to any of my patients in terms of something healthy, delicious, and nutrient dense. And of course, it could always be done minus the uh, goat cheese if needed. We, uh, we adapt to anybody's dietary restrictions. If you want something omitted, you know, there's tons of people right. out there that have nut allergies. Sure. We will take it out. Sure. As you can see that I made it as is. Right. So I can just skip that step. Which is great. Yeah. Which absolutely. is Which is really, really good mm -hmm. that you can do that ahead of time. Yeah. It's not set um, in stone. No. Like we accommodate everybody that walks in that door. Yeah. And it, it looks so beautiful and satiating and fresh and, and delicious. I have a new favorite. 
That mm. looks exquisite. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a beauty. Yeah. So the next dish that we are going to prepare is um, our zucchini spirals. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. We This is actually a new one for you, Linda. I don't think you've had a chance to no. see this one as of yet. <laughs> However, we made the decision, this was just added recently um, uh -huh. to our menu, and we made right. the decision to bring this today because it is... A vegan dish. Okay. And um, I just thought you would enjoy as as Joe goes through and sure and sets this up for you. He can talk to you obviously about the ingredient list right. specifically, but it is a white bean puree. Okay. Um, it's topped by zucchini spirals that uh -huh. have been sautéed in heirloom roasted uh, garlic heirloom cherry tomatoes. Right. And um, obviously this. We take a little bit of prep time because you do have to create those. Of course. I hate to use the word zoodles, but. Zucchini. A lot of people do refer to them as zoodles. Sure. But turning the zucchini into um, those noodle type sure. shape, but and it, and it, and they're so important, especially with everyone trying to minimize carbohydrates and trying to find alternate sources that are nutrient dense, but also aren't pasta. Correct. Or um, regular pasta and zucchini is a wonderful alternative to do that. And delicious of course, this immediately will become gluten free if you remove the crostini. Mm -hmm. Yep. And the and the puree, the bean puree, mm -hmm. is uh, just made from beans. White beans or, that have okay. been soaked overnight, okay, and then cooked with a sachet of herbs, uh, rosemary, thyme, garlic, uh, peppercorns, uh, red pepper flakes, cooked until they're fork tender. And then mm -hmm. you take the beans mm -hmm. and you, the liquid that you cook it in has right. got so much immense flavor yeah. that you just puree it in there, right? And it becomes this. Uh, I don't want to call it a sauce, but it's great uh, accoutrement to the uh, uh -huh. finished dish. Uh huh. So for added Wonderful. flavor, we add some more balsamic glaze. I do like balsamic glaze, not gonna lie. You're making me so hungry. <laughs> <laughs> and, and my wonderful crew that's working out there probably can't wait to taste these lovely little garnish of treats. micro arugula, micro bull's blood. Micro oh, beets. Wow, look at that. Is that absolutely amazing? Zucchini noodles and white bean puree and in a lovely marinade. Again, another nutrient-dense powerhouse. Absolutely beautiful. So we did bring one last dish uh -huh. that we will um, have to assemble for you. <laughs> okay. Uh, but maybe while we're getting this sure. ready to be plated, we sure. could talk about... Well, we, we brought this dish because... It's our version of, of a lobster roll. Uh -huh. um, we choose to do our lobster uh, poached um, in butter mm -hmm. and um, right. served on top of a thick cut right. piece of toasted brioche toast. Right. Um, right. I think all of us in here could say probably doesn't sound like the most nutritious, but as you know from your experience sure. and sure. the uh, benefits of lobster. So I'll let you speak to that. And uh, oh, while we get oh, the, the ingredients. Lobster. Yeah. Well, lobster, uh, a three and a half ounce serving has about 96 calories without butter. So relative to um, turkey, which has a little more, and then chicken, and then beef, um, it is, it's one of the lowest, as long as you don't add butter to it as a quality source of protein. It also has wonderful omega-3 fatty acids which uh, are essential to us because we don't make them. So we must take them in in sources of walnuts or flax seed or flax oil. These are a uh, wonderful uh, example or type of protein that has it. Um, and uh, as far as the bread, well, again, I said balance and moderation is key. But when I had it, I was extremely impressed of the quality and freshness uh, of, the, of the lobster. And that's what that looks like. It's decadent. <laughs> it is decadent. And inevitably what happens is people don't want the bread. Right. I don't want the bread. Right. But we end up serving it and they just can't help themselves but touch a tiny little piece of the bread because right. it's it brings right. a little, you know, a sweet factor to it. Sure. Um, it's almost, sure. it, it's de the, the bread itself, the brioche is decadent, <laughs> yes. quite honestly. The whole dish is pretty decadent. Oh, yeah. It, unquestionably, but... I don't know that we'd be able to prepare this as successfully without the butter. <laughs> right. No, I, and, and like I said, if you're having some, you're not having it all the time. It's a ex wonderful source of a great protein. And look how beautiful that looks. The quality and the colors and the textures and the flavors all coming together. Oops. And there go the micros. Sorry. That's okay. 
just <laughs> microgreens. <laughs> you do such a, a wonderful job, uh, Chef Joe uh, Romano, of presenting and putting everything together. I appreciate it. I that. always say as to my clients that presentation is key. And uh, you, your, I, you eat with your eyes. Yeah. So as soon as it comes yes. to your plate or to your table, you're just like, wow, I can't wait to dig in. Oh, it's wonderful. It's ex it's exceptional. The combination of flavors and colors and texture. It really is. And again, it's wonderful that this show is all about showing wonderful and healthy foods uh, to people that might have restrictions, dietary restrictions or health concerns, that they can find food that is healthy and delicious and, and just so unbelievably um, quenching and, and you just want to dig in. <laughs> wonderful, really. Um, I just wanted to ask some general facts about uh, wine. And what is what in general is the best pairing of wines again? Can you tell me? Well, we can tell you a lot about wine. Right. Um, I think one of the things that I like to say about wine is, right. you know, we could talk all day long about why you should like one wine versus another. And the truth is it's really what you enjoy mm -hmm. um, that's most important. Just basics, um, things like seafood and fish is typically paired best with a white wine. Um, and those white wines are packed with antioxidants, so that's a good health benefit there. Right. Um, reds. Red, you know, we talk a lot about red wine and the health benefits mm -hmm. of red wine. Red mm -hmm. wine pairs sure. brilliantly with meats right. and um, things that are a little bit heartier. Right. Um, a lot of people think of red as a winter type of wine, mm -hmm. but we don't really believe that that's true. You could drink red wine all year lo all year long. Right. Um, and, of course, there's a million rules of thumb about what you should exactly pair with certain dishes. And I think as we're watching trends in wine, um, people are not as rigid anymore. You, We have an incredible scallop dish that, that we serve and is, again, very nutrient-rich. And that's something that you would automatically think would pair with a white or a Sauvignon Blanc. But right. at the same time, it pairs beautifully with a Pinot Noir. Right. Right. So, you know, right. again, it's, it's really depends on your palate. Mm -hmm. um, cheeses mm -hmm. and cheese boards, I mean, you know, that's something that we're working on developing a lot. And it's something that's a favorite of yours. And cheeses, as a so. general rule, um, some of the more, you know, sharper cheeses pair beautifully with red wines. Yes. Um, yes. Lighter, milder sure. cheeses will go well with, with a Chardonnay. The, yes. Um, but you could always slip a rosé in there, depending on yeah. the season, you know, as we're coming heavily into rosé season now. Um, and I had I had also uh, read into that you have uh, uh, specialties in terms of the cheese that you're sharing with yes, your wines. Yes, we actually the quality. Have, um, we've definitely done a lot um, of extensive talk in house about our cheese boards and what we're going to be offering to um, our customers and. We kind of all agreed that none of us in-house are literally cheese experts. And it's amazing what you learn in the industry. And, and Joe can speak to this being a chef. I mean, you go to culinary school and you find your passions. And some people go into pastry and some people go into cheese, believe it or not. It's it's an incredibly amazing world. Right. Um, and we were fortunate enough to meet a woman who is a cheese expert and has kind of went from being a pastry chef to becoming submerged in the world of cheese and mm -hmm. so she's going to work with us and collaborate and kind of as i say curate our cheese boards for us going forward so we're launching that this weekend we're really excited about that so that would be exciting because i remember as a young person my father took me to mount tremblant and we spent an entire week learning how to taste wine and the appropriate cheese that would go with the appropriate wine so that's where my my passion for cheese began uh quality wonderful tastes and the creaminess and the flavor of uh, of wonderful cheeses. Uh, just just uh, tell me which one oxidizes faster? Is it red wine or white wine? Uh, I wouldn't even really want to get near a wine that would oxidize <laughs> that quickly. Um, yeah, one of the things you want to be careful about is is the shelf life. Right. You know, obviously having thirty different wines by the glass, we have to be very diligent and careful about when we open a bottle of wine. Right. It's pretty much a two day lifespan, uh -huh. and and beyond that, you know, the air gets in there and it. It just doesn't right. really do a good service to the wine. Actually. And that's the same so, as well after you refrigerate it? Uh, well, refrigeration is, you know, questionable. And the whites, I mean, it's the same thing. If you open it and you keep it in the refrigerator for two days, that's pretty much uh -huh. where the buck stops on that one. Okay. Um, reds, right. you know, some people do refrigerate reds. Um, right. Not always. 
in the summertime, we see some people, will, you know, cool them down a little bit, but most right. of you drink really more at room temperature. Yes, and you had indicated people uh, for a Merlot. You have a specific one that I think is... Uh, well, you ha you are a Merlot lover, and, right. you know, you, with the Merlot being a very, you know, kind of a fruit-forward sure. type wine. And it can be very healthy. Very sure. healthy. Sure. Well, of course, that's why you're going to drink Merlot, because it's healthy. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Well, I, I can't thank you enough for being here, for taking the time to share. Um, I truly believe in everything you're doing, and your expertise expertise, Chef Joe Romano, and your expertise, Stephanie, in creating this amazing, phenomenal food of lovely texture, flavor, aromaticity, and also in terms for my clients that any dietary restriction can be taken into consideration no matter what it is and also be wonderfully delicious and, and satiated. Um, so it's it's a great place with healthy and wonderful food. That's what the show's all about. I want to thank my wonderful crew for all their help, and I'm sure they can't wait to dig into <laughs> this great food. Thank you again for being here. Thank you, thank Linda. You.